Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome back to our Rostock Max V 3.2 build series. This will be part four of the series. If you haven't been following along, now's a good time to pause and go back and watch the earlier videos so that you're at the same part of the build process as we are. If you're not familiar with CME CNC's line of Delta printers, please check out the links in the description down below so that you can check out not only the Rostock Max, but also their full line of Delta printers. So at the end of part three, we wrapped up by building the upper motor mount assemblies, and that was a bit of work, but it, they're done. Today, we are going to move on to steps 16 and moving from there to finish assembling the base. So you ready? Let's do it. Okay, I didn't address the tools that you're going to need for this one, but it's actually pretty simple. You'll need a number two screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers possibly, a knife or a deburring tool, and I'm going to cheat a little bit and use my impact wrench just to expedite things a little bit for some of the screws. So the first thing that we're going to do as per step six is I'm going to inspect these side pieces here. And if you have any flashing on them uh, from the injection molded process, either on the outside edges or the inside, that would prevent them from sitting flush. You're going to want to use your knife and just gently scrape that edge and get that off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all six of these and get them nice and cleaned up for you. Okay, now that we have those cleaned up, we're going to go back and we're going to put nylock nuts into the T-holes here the same way that we have with other pieces. Remembering to always put the bell of the nut towards the top. And again, use your needle nose pliers if you need to, to help you get those in. Okay, we're going to go ahead and set these and this top piece aside for a second and we're going to slide this over here into view and I'm going to go ahead and flip this over for now and the first thing that we're going to do is screw on these idler plates using the 632 screws and I'm just going to drop the screws in make sure they're hitting a nut in all four corners. So I'm sorry, I keep saying all four corners because I'm used to a square. This is a delta, there's only three corners. Gonna make sure that they start threading in. Like so. Then I'm going to cheat here and use power tools to tighten these down. Now again, you don't want to over tighten it because of the melamine. So the best thing to do is get it torqued down just a little bit so that the, you don't have as far to go and then finish it off with by hand. Okay, now we're going to flip this base back over. And we're going to insert these guys. And you're going to want to have the flat side 
towards the outside so that the, the nubs are towards the inside. So you can see that there's a, a physical nub there. So we're going to put three of these on like so. And it doesn't matter which way is up or which way is down. And just temporarily to make it easier, I'm going to put this on the top. You want to make sure you line up where it says um, X and Y in the different directions. So I'm just temporarily going to set this on here. I'm not even going to push it in, just kind of there to hold it. That's just going to allow me to sandwich it to flip it over a little bit easier. And I miss tightening up that one screw there. Okay, now we're going to, for the six screws that hold those side pieces on, we're going to go ahead and torque those down as well. So we're going to hand start these make sure that they're grabbing the nut then I'm going to switch over to my impact wrench and torque those down Okay, we can now flip this over and set it down here. Now we're going to need to fit this top piece on by lining up all the holes. Uh, if you need to, you may need to loosen the screws that hold the idlers if these are too narrow and you can't get them to go together. And again, make sure that you line up the X with the X and the Z with the Z, and the Y with the Y. And all those pieces fit together nice and good. Okay, once those are in, we're just going to start dropping screws. There's going to be two on each of the three tower points. And then two on each of these side pieces. And I'm going to head and start tightening those down. You want to kind of try to follow a pattern if you can so that you keep it fairly level as you do it. Okay, then we're going to go back with our number two screwdriver and and tighten them down the rest of the way. Set those aside. If all went well, this should sit nice and flat and stable without any wobble. Assuming that your table is flat. And you should have a nice, sturdy, strong base. So, that takes us to the end section of step 18 here. From the base hardware, we're going to want to install the six clips. Don't want to lose the other parts, but we're going to have the six clips that will go on here to hold the bed down, as well as these base plates and then we have the hardware bag from the base which is going to have six nuts and six of these 632 bolts these are the same on either side so what you want to do is just drop a nut in one side and maybe use your screwdriver to push it in all the way flat, like so. 
And we're going to go ahead and do that with all of these. Okay, now we're going to install these bed clips and I'm going to try to show you here. Basically underneath each hole, we're going to have the nut down like so. We're going to have screw through the bed clip. It's going to go through the hole down into there like so. And you're just going to tighten it up. and then kind of turn those out of the way. And that's what your bed is going to seat on. So let's go ahead and do the other six the same way here and work our way around the circle. Okay, that is done. That finishes up through step 19. So that finishes off this segment. In our next part of the series, we're actually going to start working with the towers and we're going to see this thing starting to grow. Special thank you goes out to CME CNC for providing the Rostock Max V3.2 for us to use in this build series. If you're not subscribed, please consider clicking the button down below and ring that bell so that you're notified when the next segment of the series is out. If you are going to be doing any online shopping, I do have affiliate links to both Amazon and MatterHackers down below. Using them doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help out the channel and allow me to continue to make videos like this. So your support is greatly appreciated. And with that, I bid you aloha and we'll see you next time on Practical Printing.